All right, how's it going, everyone? Um, so I thought I'd do a quick behind the scenes of my latest project, which is called Bunker House. Um, so I've literally finished this project about uh, 10 minutes ago, and what you're seeing here is the end result, which has um, been edited on Photoshop. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is just walk through behind the scenes of this this project. Um, and hopefully you guys can learn um, what I learned about this this whole process. It was a really um, it was a really fun project, but it was also pretty challenging um, because the vegetation was super intensive, and I had to figure out kind of a good method for um, how to how to show a heap of vegetation but not have it use up all my memory. And I kind of maxed out my RAM with this project so um, I'm gonna start by showing you um, how I set up kind of my file structure so um, what I did essentially is I had um, a base file which um, which was um, basically my house and my environment blender files linked into and I rendered out of that and um, that's a good way just to make sure that your your scene isn't getting too heavy. So um, I'm going to start by showing the look dev um, file, which has all my plants in it, which you can see here. And I've got kind of a file structure um, with all my different vegetation that I used in the scene. Um, and it's a great way to organize your assets there's probably better ways to do it but this is what i found worked really well so i've got basically all these different types of trees here um, and all the bushes and everything um, and it took probably a day to to do all this but what it meant was um, i can kind of isolate each task and really focus on what needs to be done um, and it helps me to not get distracted which is something that i used to do all the time so these are just a few of the the assets that I've got and um, a lot of this is from the New Zealand uh, vegetation pack um, by Glow Plants which I found is fantastic um, and, and really really good so um, yeah so essentially what I'll do is I'll put all these assets into collections and then into individual collections so um, what that means is that when I go into my environment, and if I go into my environment file, for some reason, all of those plants that I've um, had in the other file, so they're all instant, instanced or linked into here. Um, and what that means is that it runs way better um, when I'm in the environment file because now I'm going to start to scatter these and place them and, and it's going to get really heavy if they're all um, if they're all just duplicated in here um, without linking them from another blender file um, and if we come across to where um, where my where my render was framed um, you know I've got basically populated all of these with the I've just duplicated the linked um, plants and everything into here and I've just gone around and some of it's been hand placed and some of it's been scattered using the scatter plugin which is a great plugin this has been done with the scatter plugin and the grass is done with the scatter plugin um, but some of the most of the foreground plants like the uh, the flax bush and the um, the plant the rooftop planter that's all just hand placed um, anything that I think is really important, I'm going to hand place um, because it's really easy for it to look wrong. All these trees that are done with the scatter plugin, uh, it's kind of, I've fudged it a fair bit, but uh, it doesn't really matter because in the, I guess in the final render, it, um, where is that? Uh, in the final render, it looks pretty convincing so you don't even see the base of the trees um cool so so that's essentially the environment file um and i've linked in 
along with the, the plants, I've also linked in the architecture file. Um, so anything related to the building, like the, um, the stairs, the, the, the actual building itself, um, the pool, all of that is actually in another Blender file. So as I said before, we've got the architecture, we've got the planting, and then that goes, that plugs into the rendering file, which I've called the base file. Um, and that just helps the scene run way more smoothly than if it was all kind of just in one. Um, and as I said before, it also just helps me to focus on what's important, what I'm doing at the moment, instead of veering off and doing something else. Um, yeah, so that's essentially the, the planting file. Um, something to note in here um, is when I'm working on camera angles and composition, um, I'm quite often working with rotating the HDRI and moving trees to create shadows. I'm doing all that in here before I move to the rendering file. And then I'll basically just copy the sun position, the rotation of the HDRI and make the base file, the rendering file, um, what I've done in here. Um, so yeah, that's pretty, much, that's pretty much the environment and the planting. So I'm going to go to the to the architecture file real quick. Um, so this is the architecture file um, and I've also linked in the planting into this so everything's getting linked into everything else. It's kind of complex um, but it's if you start doing it you'll you'll get your head around it. Um, but essentially this is a Archicad model that I have um, exported and um, thankfully all the UV maps and everything have been really good to to deal with. Um, I've kind of manually done a little bit of it, um, but uh, it did save a lot of time than if I had to render the, uh, if I had to model the whole thing in Blender. Um, yeah, one thing to note um, is that the decking itself, um, it's the first thing, that, uh, the first time I've done this, but I used a procedural um, UV kind of material. So um, I've got my I, I um, looked at some, some tutorial on this and um, normally I'll just manually shift the UVs on the planks of wood but I thought I'd give this a shot and that's the basic node setup. So you've got geometry uh, geometry nodes going into color ramp and then I don't really understand it but if you want to copy it, there it is. Um, that all plugs into the just the normal albedo and stuff. Um, yeah, and um, I did model all the wood planks in here because it's kind of a pain to do that in Archicad. Um, but everything else in general is um, is just imported from Archicad as a as an OBJ, I think, um, which yeah, which is really useful. Um, and so if I open up the base file. Um, And all the furniture as well um, is placed into this architecture file. So any chairs, tables, any decorations um, related to architecture, uh, related to architecture, that's all in this file. Alrighty, so we are in the base file now, which is what everything plugs into and what I render from. Um, so if I go to so it's uh it's pretty slow at the moment just because I've um <clears throat> I've got so much in this file and it's it's really pulling its weight at the moment. So um so this is essentially what it looks like um, through the camera. I've got the architecture file here. I've got the planting file here, which is just crazy. It's everywhere, um, and that's it. Literally, my scene is. Um, I've got the environment, I've got the house, and I've got the camera, like literally that's it. Um, and in terms of the, the settings, um, if I go to rendering view, this may take a few seconds. Alrighty, so this is the render view uh, in the base file, uh, and as you can see it's it's looking pretty good. 
I've got the planting linked in, I've got the architecture linked in, I've got the HDRI shining a nice, um, nice shadow on the foreground, leading the eye into the focal point. Um, and yeah, it was a pretty smooth project to set up. Um, it was just a bit time consuming. The HDRI I used was one by PG Skies. Uh, it's the 1101 um, and I have actually altered it just to change the sky a little bit, but um, that's kind of another story. Um, I have also lowered the location of the, the Z axes because you could actually see the base of the HDRI. So um, I've, it's a very small amount, but it does actually make quite a big difference. Um, and the rotation is just to allow that sun to hit and um, create kind of a little bit of um, contrast with value and lead the eye in. Um, in terms of the actual color management rendering settings, it's pretty standard, just film it, medium high contrast, and then I've got the exposure down just to, um, just to balance it. Um, and then with the compositing, as Chef I quickly mentioned, when, when I've rendered it, I haven't actually used the denoise um, mode, but I have included denoising data, which I've found is actually way better than just letting the kind of, letting the denoiser just, you know, take take effect. So if I come across to the compositing tab, um, it's literally just got that denoise node, chuck the image in, chuck the normal and the albedo and just spit it out. Um, and if I co go across to my Photoshop, you can see my kind of build up of um, effects. So if I turn off the camera raw filter, you'll see the before and it's a pretty big difference. I mean, I, I thought it looked pretty good in in Blender, but actually when you when you do a lot of the post-processing, it really adds a lot. So if I go into the Photoshop filter real quick, um, so you can see it's pretty, pretty straightforward, just a little bit of exposure, highlight shadows, blacks, a little bit of texture, um, the real kind of work was done in the color mixer and that's kind of pretty common with a lot of my work. Um, the, the one thing that I kind of focus on, or at least the two things that I focus on are the grass, you know, just the vegetation in general and the sky. Um, there wasn't a lot of work to do on the sky, but you can see the grass, I kind of toned it down a little bit, brought it more to a neutral, um, you know, neutral balance. You don't want to push, you don't want to desaturate the grass too much, but I think it's about bringing the colors into kind of a, a, a small range. So maybe all the orangey plants go towards green and then the, the really blue green that goes towards more of a warmer green. So it's just bringing all the, all the green colors together just to be in a, a smaller range. Um, and that helps with the composition a lot. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, I then did a, just a little bit of, um, sharpening and stuff like that. Um, I would have done a 4k render, but it would have taken about like five hours for me to render for some reason. I think it was just because of all the vegetation. So yeah. Um, and then I have just a simple vignette on, on the top and I literally do that by just creating a layer um turning it all black and then i will literally just use the eraser and then just erase around um let's harden this down and then i'll just literally drop the opacity right down um just so it's quite subtle so yeah that's um that's bunker house um hope you found it useful and uh yeah let me know because i'll keep making these kinds of videos and hopefully um get into more kind of topics like composition, lighting, um, you know, look dev and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so let me know if it helps and um, stay tuned for the next one.